Howdy! Welcome to the See Through Podcast, a weekly podcast that creates transparency on disabilities and the champions with them. I'm your host, Lance Johnson, and I live, create, and podcast from Brooklyn, New York, with a visual impairment called retinitis pigmentosa, or RP for short. This episode marks episode 35 and features a true gem of a dude. My guest today is Anthony Ferraro. Anthony is a blind athlete and musician living with Lieber congenital amaurosis, an eye disorder that primarily affects the retina. It's associated with vision problems such as increased sensitivity to light, involuntary movements of the eyes, and extreme farsightedness. But enough with that medical jibber jabber. Let's talk about Anthony. Anthony was recently featured in a feature length documentary titled A Shot in the Dark, which covered his high school wrestling career and the obstacles he faced as a blind wrestler wrestling sighted opponents. It's such a great documentary that everyone should go check out. And while we dive deep into that documentary, we equally talk about his modern day life as a musician, judo athlete, and popular social media figure. Speaking of social media, you may be familiar with Anthony already. His handle is at ASF Vision. So go check him out after this episode. But before you hear my amazing conversation with Anthony, make sure to subscribe or follow the See Through Podcast on whatever streaming platform you're listening on. Also, if you haven't yet, give the See Through Podcast a follow on social media. The handle is at See Through Pod. Now that that advertisement for myself is out of the way, I won't waste any more time. Here's episode 35 with Anthony Ferraro. Well, thanks, Anthony, for coming on the podcast. Stoked to be here, man. Yeah. For those uh, listening, Anthony's rocking a pretty cool hat. He's got hair longer than me, which is a change. You know, usually I'm used to having longer hair. <laughs> yeah, but my, uh, my fiance, got, I'm a huge Stevie Ray Vaughn fan. And uh, my girl actually got me this hat for my birthday. It's like a replica that was handmade in uh, Australia. It's like... I haven't been able to take it off since. Yeah, dude, it's it's an awesome hat, and I know exactly what you're talking about because I know Stevie Ray Vaughan. But uh, you're you're talking to me. You're currently in New Jersey, right? Yeah, I'm I'm in uh, right by Asbury Park. Cool, cool. So I think like a lot of people may be familiar with you, but for the people who who are just getting introduced to you, I would love it if you could maybe give them like an intro to who you are and what you're about. Yeah, man. Uh, absolutely. My name's Anthony Ferraro. I'm 26 years old. I was born blind with a eye condition called Lieber's congenital amaurosis. And it's a uh, real, can't say that five times fast, but <laughs> it's LCA for short. And it's a degenerative eye, eye disease. So like I was able to see a little bit when I was younger, uh, very limited peripheral. So like couldn't see to the sides and no night vision at all. But I was able to, you know, see enough and like to basically fake to myself that I wasn't blind, I guess, but like clearly was blind to the world. (laughs) And, uh, as I grew up, I was the youngest of five and like my mom's the second oldest of 13. So I had 60 cousins that all grew up in the same area. So they never treated me any differently. Like I grew up, uh, skateboarding, surfing. I was like riding bikes until I started hitting parked cars. And my mom was like, you got to stop doing that. (laughs) So now I ride on the tandem bike, like on the back with my girl, or sometimes she'll let me go on the front and tell me left or right. And it's, it's a blast. But uh, other than that, I mean, I grew up wrestling, started in seventh grade. Uh, I was awful. I went like two and 12. And then I like wanted to get better. So I, you know, started training at a club 
a wrestling club every day, like four days a week and two nights, like I'd go to wrestling tournaments every weekend. And I just fell in love with like hard work, started working really hard, got pretty good at wrestling and uh, eighth grade, like did really well. You know, I won like the championship and stuff. And then I went on to high school after being like denied to a high school for, I was accepted to the high school both my brothers went to. And then I was denied after that president died. And I got a letter saying, you're no longer accepted. Uh, we don't want to have to accept, you know, you won't fit into the environment and the culture. We don't want to make accommodations for you, things like that. So it was like this like huge shock when you're like 14. You're like, dude, the world's not fair. Like, this isn't cool, you know. And I was just so angry. And, you know, finally, I just kept wrestling and ended up going to another school here in Jersey and doing really well for myself. You know, it was open arms, like welcoming. The wrestling coach was like the nicest guy in the world, this guy, Pat Smith. And, uh, you know, I grew up wrestling and doing that. And I won a couple championships in high school and uh, went on to do. There was a film made about me through high school. My brother and another guy, you know, teamed up and made called A Shot in the Dark. Uh, it's a documentary. And yeah, I've seen that. I watched it yesterday. Oh, no way, man. That's awesome. Yeah. For those listening, if you want to watch A Shot in the Dark, I rented it on Amazon Prime. So I highly recommend watching it. It's a great documentary. It just released two on uh, the other day, actually, which is awesome. Apple TV and Google Plus. So that's been like a real big help. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So there's plenty of ways to check it out. And I highly recommend it. It's called A Shot in the Dark. Yeah. You had quite a wrestling journey, man. I, I Yeah. I'll let you finish. But yeah, I, I have a lot to talk about. <laughs> no, then just fast forward, like the Olympic Committee saw the documentary and I'm sitting home one day and I get a call and they're like, hey, this is the United States Olympic Committee. Like, can we speak to Anthony Ferraro? And I'm like, you have the wrong number, you know? And they're like, no, we saw the film. And if you're, if you have any of that talent left, like, would you consider training for the Paralympics to try and compete in the Paralympics for judo? And I was like, the only disability in, in Paralympic judo is visual impairment. And I was like, damn, that seems pretty cool. You know, like, this is another opportunity to try and train for something. So I jumped right on it. And, you know, four years later, or five years later, here I am, like, uh, training for the Paralympics. So it's been like a hell of a journey and, you know, a lot of things in between that, but that's kind of the sh <laughs> long, short, long story. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. You have a uh, quite a story going back a bit. So, you know, we were talking about your documentary, a shot in the dark, uh, which covers basically your whole r high school wrestling career. And then, uh, you know, fast forward. Now you're training for the Paralympics, you know, as a judo athlete. What I've noticed about you, and this is why I find you interesting, and maybe you'll either agree or disagree with me, is you're very athletic, and uh, these sports that you participate in seem to have like some like aggressive kind of uh, tactics to them and elements to the sports that you participate in. Yet, on the other side of things, you are um, a musician. You just did a tour, blind busking tour. You're very active on social media and create really positive kind of videos that kind of teach people about, you know, life with a visual impairment. And you have these like peaceful kind of quotes, you know, like you say one love a lot and, you know, the only disability is a bad attitude. You kind of seem you have these two parts of your personality. So I, I, I was curious to know, like out of those two as like a wrestler slash judo athlete, are you more of that or are you more of a uh, musician slash artist kind of motivational speaker? Which one would you say? Are you, are you a good balance? I love that question, man. That, I've never been asked that, to be honest. <laughs> um, that is probably one of my favorite questions. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because I think most of the time, so I am that, I, I think a lot of me is that artistic, you know, musician slash like you know just in life kind of just this like different unique personality i'd, I'd like to say because i'm i've always felt different than others growing up you know even aside from the blindness just like the things i like like i like dressing funky i like doing all these things like i like being social you know yeah. and i think the wrestling and the the fighting so i found that later in life because like i kind of wanted to like find something to fit in and like find like a team aspect and you know, it, it worked out so well because it taught me so much in life. And I think what it comes down to is the wrestling and fighting balances out this like 
you know, I have this crazy artistic mind that's always like, I, I, like, you know, crazy emotions, like everything's coming out. And the wrestling, the fighting, the working out, it really balances that out because it's an outlet to take out that, like, sometimes frustration or whatever it may be. Um, but aside from, uh, you know, other on the other hand, like the re- the music and everything, it really helps me calm down from all this, like, crazy fighting and training that I'm doing all the time. No, I think, yeah, I, I think that's a good way to answer that. I, I agree. And that, that's kind of what my hunch was, man. Uh, so you're, mm-hmm. you're a good balance of the two. Yeah, because, you know, going back to your documentary, you know, you're a very skilled wrestler and you worked you worked out very hard. Footage of you training was pretty intense and, like, you were in great shape. And wrestling itself is very physical. You know, you're, you're a lot of, like, slams and pins. And so it takes a certain type of uh, mentality to kind of, want to actively participate in that. And I know you wanted to be a part of a team and wrestling kind of was your window into like this, like community or like this sports community. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, aside from that, I like really just fell in love with music and working out. They're two separate escapes for me. So like when I'm training and fighting and stuff, it's like, all I can think about is that, you know, I, I keep my mind clear. And with, it's, it's an escape, but it's a different escape because my body is, it's brutal. Like, you know, I, and you come out after you with this great high, like that runner's high people get and stuff like that. But, you know, aside from that, like you can get hurt. Like, so I'm, for instance, I'm injured right now. And like music is like the biggest escape, you know, it's like I play my guitar and I don't even feel blind anymore. Like I, I close my eyes and like, I feel like the, the playing ground is even here. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy. And guitar is just music in general is my escape. And also just, you know, I get so, so pumped off like people getting inspired and people getting motivated from like the speaking and the videos. So like that just like pumps me up too. And it's like all these things that drive me to keep going, you know, it's like, if I'm not going to be fighting, I'll always be working out. Cause that is the biggest in my opinion, one of the biggest antidepressants that are uh, you could possibly prescribe to someone. And you don't have to sit in a gym for like four hours, man. Like you, people think you have to work out like craziness. Like you could do 20 minute workouts a day, three times a week or something. And that'll keep you like healthy mentally and physically, you know? Yeah, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I've kind of used this pandemic as a, an excuse for me to get back into working out because I kind of needed it to keep myself saying exactly i'm a video editor and i do this podcast so i do a lot of sitting basically so it's i kind of if i don't work out then it whatever i eat you know it's just gonna stick to me (laughs) i'm the same way man that's why and like once i start feeling that like feeling myself getting lazy and and like sitting around and stuff i start to feel like almost depressed like you know it's like i know i'm i need to be doing more than this and I think that's something I struggle too with is like, I'm such a crazy mentality that like, no matter what I'm doing, I'm like, I know I'm supposed to be doing more, you know? And it's like, I need to like sometimes balance that as well. Yeah. I'm the same way. And I think that mentality is kind of, I think that helps you with your sports career, I think. And I think it will help you with your music career too. Absolutely, man. It's like, uh, you know, even with music, like I was, <laughs> I was awful when I first started and like, uh, I found it later in life, maybe like senior year of high school. And my dad, he plays like trumpet and piano. And I have like a buddy that plays drums and stuff. And one day we're at my house, my buddy's playing the, like the djembe drum and my dad's playing the trumpet and I'm sitting there. I'm like, Dude, this is like BS, man. Like <laughs> I, I'm just sitting and I don't know how to play an instrument. Like, this isn't fair. I was like, I want to jam. And, like, at the time, I was only into, like, rap and stuff. And my dad always tried to get me to listen to, like, you know, the blues and, like, jazz and different classic rock and stuff. And I always, like, you know, pushed against it. But, like, finally, just sitting in my backyard while they were playing real music, I was like, whoa, man, like, this, is, this isn't this is fair. Like, I need to be involved in this. And... I, uh, my uncle Tony he actually left a guitar at my house one time. He's like, he'll pick it up one day. And, uh, you know, sure enough, I go into the basement while they're jamming. I get the guitar and I'm like, dad, like, show me a chord, like show me something to do, you know? Yeah. And he's 
one chord, like a C chord, and I just started slamming away on it, man. Like I was awful. Like it was, I, it, my family wouldn't even let me practice in front of them. Like they called me Stone Hands. I didn't even know what like rhythm was, like a, a timing and stuff. And like I just felt so great, like just slamming on that guitar, like playing with them. And I just kept playing every day. Like it was like wrestling all over again. Like I was awful in the beginning. Like I was not athletic to begin with, you know, like it didn't come out easy, come easy. Like it just, I fell in love with that, this mountain in front of you that you have to climb, like these challenges of like, all right, I have to get better at this. Like you see the, you, you see the people around that are like your inspirations and you're like, that's what I have to strive for. And like, I want to be even better than that. And, you know, that's kind of how like music started. And I just started playing every day and, Next thing you know, like I'm out on stage when I still don't even know how to like sing and stuff and I'm just playing and like doing it, you know, like it, it, you only get better doing it, you know? Yeah. 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 That's, that's cool, man. I think it's always like hearing how people get into things they're really passionate about. Like the first time they kind of figured it out. That's always interesting. It sounds like your family is a very, uh, warm and kind of supportive family and kind of helping you and like just let you kind of do whatever you want to do would you agree i think uh absolutely and i think the reason the way they help me is by letting me make those mistakes and like go out and like scrape my knee growing up and like you know (laughs) ride that bike into the car i mean it might not always be the best thing but like my i wasn't treated differently and on the other hand my parents fought for me so hard to get the right services and you know equipment and things for me to be successful and like independent in the sighted world so like it was like both sides of it and it was amazing you know sometimes we're really rough like you know even when you're five years old in the candy store and your mom you're like mom i want this piece of candy and she's like all right here's five bucks go find the counter and pay for it and i'm like i'm blind mom like come on you gotta help me find the counter like you got to do this for me. And she's like, Andy, I'm not always going to be here. Like you got to ask for help. You know, like those lessons are huge. Yeah. 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 And I saw a lot of that in your, in your, in the film, you know, shot in the dark where your, your family really had your back when it came to wrestling. And I think this is a good segue. It's like, uh, in the film, for those who are not familiar with the film, it's, it covers Anthony's high school wrestling career. And since Anthony is, uh, blind he has to have a specific way of wrestling so and correct me if i'm ever wrong because i'm trying to summarize this you know you've been right man (laughs) the way anthony had to wrestle was i I, i'm like from the south so i almost always say wrestle you know (laughs) wrestling but uh uh but yeah so you have to kind of keep contact with your opponent throughout the entire match or they have to like kind of always have some sort of contact that way you know where there are because without that they could back away from you and just kind of take you down from behind or something like that it's a very would be a very unfair advantage exactly so it was called two hand contact and you nailed it perfectly and like if we broke away i have no idea where the guy was so it, like it could be a danger like my knees could get taken yeah. out my you know go behind me and take me down so like keep going you got yeah, it yeah okay that's how you had to wrestle your opponents some opponents did not like that they had to do that. Some co- other coaches did not like that their uh, players or wrestlers had to wrestle you in a specific way. Um, some of the parents of the opponents did not like that you had to wrestle a certain way. So you had a lot of kind of pushback against the style, but at the same time, you were you basically you almost went undefeated your senior year. And uh, so I'm curious to hear your perspective because my point is, and I kind of lost it a little bit, is that your family is very supportive, right? Yeah. But I also saw that you have coaches that are supportive and you had teammates that were supportive. But at the same time, you had just probably an equal amount, if not more people who were not supportive. And uh, does that feel like it carries over to other parts of your life, not just wrestling? Absolutely, man. I could talk about that for a second. Um, so yeah, the, the two-hand touch, like, it really bothered some people. It didn't bother anyone when I was terrible. Um, No one cared. They all felt bad for me. (laughs) And, you know, finally started doing well and it became this problem. I'll never forget the first time it was a problem. It wasn't a problem my whole eighth grade year. I went 24 and one my eighth grade year. And my, my final match of the year, I'm in the championship. I'm losing 13 to two. 
and there's like 30, 45 seconds left. And we're on our feet. We're wrestling on our feet. And like the only way I can win now is if I pin the kid. So I throw the kid to his back with like 30 seconds left. And the crowd goes nuts. Like I end up pinning him and like I won the championship. You know, everyone's going nuts. Like the the gym is like you could feel it shaking, man. It was this crazy feeling. And, you know, I'm all hyped. Like I'm, I'm a little confused. Like I couldn't believe it just happened type of thing. And, you know, after that, like we shake hands. Me and the kids shake hands. No problem. You know, he's a little upset, but that's like normal. You're eighth grade. You just lost a big batch. Like it's normal, you know. And after the match, the kid's dad walks up to my dad and he's like, your son has an unfair advantage in this sport. It's not fair to him that that it's not fair to my kid that he has to stay in contact with your son. He should go do something else like he should be in the Special Olympics, blah, blah, blah. All these like things. And it was so hurtful. And like I was 13 years old and I just won this championship. And like I was so pumped. And then it felt like I was like, wait. You know, it started messing with my head. I was like, do I have an unfair advantage? Like, is all this hard work? Like, do I, am I just like, you know, have the upper hand or whatever? Like, it's not really from all the hard work. And like, started getting all these doubts and lies in my head. And like, you know, it, it didn't stop. Like through high school, people, people were so upset with the two hand touch. And, and uh, I remember you know, kids used to say, like, I was faking it. Parents used to say I was faking my blindness. And, you know, at one time someone was saying to my dad, oh, your son's faking it, blah, blah, blah. Literally while I was tripping over the bleachers, and my dad looks over and laughs at the guy. He's like, really? You think my son's faking it? <laughs> and, uh, and there was one other time, man, where uh, my dad was actually talking to a coach, a coach from another team that really disliked me because we kind of had a rivalry. Okay. Um, my dad was talking to the coach and he's like, the coach is like, yeah, well, he has a, you know, he's, he's only winning matches basically because he has this unfair advantage, blah, blah, blah. And my dad's like, turns around. He's like, don't you think the kid's like winning matches? Cause he works his ass off. He's like, the kid puts in so many hours. Like he's going, doing so much more than a lot of people. And like, I started wrestling late and I was like, I have a, you know, I have to catch up to everyone. So I put in like, I packed in like 10 years of wrestling in like four years, man. Like it was crazy. And to be a kid, you're just in high school and you want to just, you know, wrestle with the other kids. You want to just be normal kid in high school. Like you're not trying to focus on your blindness, really. You're trying to almost not be blind in this world, you know? And like, I could, wasn't like accepting of it at first. And it was like so annoying, man. I was like, I just want to wrestle. Like I remember just being, I just want to wrestle. Like this is such BS, you know, like too much politics and like to the point where coaches were saying stuff when I was wrestling, like because they know I, I could hear them and they would get in my head. And like in the beginning of my high school career, you know, I'd let these things get to me so badly where I'd like say things out loud, like back to the coaches, like shut the F up, like all these things. And like I wasn't proud of it. And I had to work on that to grow, you know, at an early age, which, you know, might not be fair, but it really helped me in life. To, to grow up kind of quick and deal with these things to the point where my senior year, I was trying not to let these people get to me anymore. And actually one of my biggest accomplishments in high school that I think is my senior year, I won the overall sportsmanship award, like of the shore conference in Jersey. And to me, that was like a huge win because I was kind of a hothead dealing with a lot of people throughout high school. No. Yeah. I didn't know that you won that award. That I agree. That's super cool. Cause yeah, in the documentary, you know, you get pretty heated you know? Yeah, man. It, uh, there were times where it was it emotional. You know, you're still a kid just trying to figure out life. I mean, you don't even know what, what life is yet, really. <laughs> yeah. But you think you do, you know? <laughs> you're a baby. Like, it's just, it's, yeah, you think you know the world. Yeah. Like, you think you have the world by the balls, but you don't, you don't know anything. Yeah. But yeah, man, I think that you overcoming all that in high school, it's kind of set you up for success now. You know, because it doesn't stop, right? Like, uh, yeah, nothing's gonna phase you now. It's crazy because this ha that happened, and it kind of, like you said, it kind of set me up for what I'm gonna have to deal with. And now I have to deal with like people. You know, <laughs> it's on like a whole new level of like hundreds of thousands of people. You know, coming at me with the faking blindness and mass reports of faking disability, all these things, and like. It'll never really stop, man. But like, it, you just can't let these things discourage you in life. And like, 
no matter what you do in life, no matter who you are, where you are, like if you are doing something positive and trying to help others and, and actually, you know, getting traction, there will be a angry people. There's hurt people that will always try to bring you down. And my like, all you can do, man, is like try and kill those people with kindness. Because if you try and like combat them with the hate, then they're just winning. Like they're bringing you down. And all you have to do is just keep being positive. And like, it's so hard sometimes, but you just have to combat the hate with the love. Like that's the only way to like spread positivity and just like keep going, you know, carrying that hate on you is so it's just toxic. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. And I I think that's kind of huge part of why I do this podcast is just, I'm just trying to put people's perspectives out there. So maybe people who, who don't really know where, you know, the disability community is kind of coming from and kind of the things that we have to think about and talk and overcome. Maybe it, you know, gives them a little bit of knowledge and a little bit maybe can help them like kind of understand, you know, cause I think, I think a lot of it's just a misunderstanding, you know, and like a confusion. Absolutely, man. I mean, there's, I just try to tell people too, like be be grateful in your situation because people ask me like, how do you do this thing blind? Like, how do you do life blind? I'm like, shit, doing things blind became easy once I met the guy like climbing mountains with no legs. Like, how the hell does that guy do it? And then like, you know, it's probably easy for that guy once he met the guy with no arm. It's like there can always be someone in a worse situation than you. Or a better situation. Like, there's always someone better off. There's always someone worse off. Yeah. Be grateful for where you are and don't try to compare yourself to other people's situations. Because that guy in the wheelchair, man, you might feel bad for him, but he's probably crushing life, like loving life. You know? Yeah. He might want to walk. I might want to see. There might be people that don't want to walk or don't want to see, but like, hell, man, if you give me vision tomorrow, I'm jumping on that train. And I, like, give me the shot. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, I'm, you know, it, it's, I'm open to it. But like, until then, you just control what you can control and just enjoy life in your, you know, make your life, you know? No, I agree 110%. And, uh, I don't think anyone's ever quite said it as well as that on the podcast yet. So thanks for uh, that perspective, man. I really appreciate that. Oh, thanks a lot, man. And I tell everyone, it just, it starts off with just making your bed in the morning. Like, don't get back in that bed. Like, start off, yeah. get up, make your bed. Go brush your teeth, shower. You already did like three, four good things for yourself. And it just starts a chain reaction. Oh, yeah, I agree, man. It's the small things. Exactly. People think you have to go out and do crazy things. No, just get out your door. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. Yeah. (laughs) Getting out of bed, step one, man. Yeah, exactly. But going back, you know, on a different side of things, I want to talk about like kind of your social media presence because uh, you're very active on there. You have quite a big following. Um, Your handle is... ASF vision if those listening want to check you out and uh yeah I'd love to hear kind of your idea behind the content you create like uh, I saw one recently that made me laugh it was like here's how I drive while blind and you're in like the driver's seat and you're like the engine revs and then it's like step one get out and then you like go ask your uh I'm like, babe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> ask your, is it, you said your fiance, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Kel. You ask your fiance, I need a ride. And then she gives you a ride. And then, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like to all these people, like, thinking I'm faking it. I'm like, here's how I drive. It's like, I don't. Oh, yeah. And you had the cane <laughs> yeah. out the window, too. Like, you were feeling exactly. the ground. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, man. <laughs> I think I revved the engine and beeped at the same time. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? Like, just having fun, man. Uh, but a quick side note, actually, she. Uh, you know, when the blind busking, so the pandemic hit and then I was like training judo nonstop, you know, it was kind of my life and the pandemic hit and like everything paused. And I'm like, what the hell do I do now? You know, it was like almost mourning a loss for a minute. Cause I didn't know if it would ever happen again. Yeah. And I was like, whatever, I'll focus on music. Like I started feeling this real drive towards, you know, playing guitar and trying to like, people were so upset, angry. There was negative, all this negativity online. Cause of like, the election and like the pandemic, all this stuff. And I was so tired of it. And I was like, I could spread, like make people smile with music, you know, like that could be my one way to try and help people during this time. Cause I'm always, you know, I love like helping others. It's one of my passions. And I, we went on we just, my fiance and I, Kelly, like she works in tech and so she can work from wherever on her computer remotely. Mm-hmm. So we went on this. We decided, you know, screw it. We're going to self-fund. I saved up all this money playing gigs around here. 
after we got engaged, we moved to Spring Lake from Brooklyn and I started playing all these gigs around here, saving up money. And we ended up just going on this, you know, spontaneously like this 10,000 mile, seven week cross country road trip where we set up in all these like beautiful locations across the country, you know, uh, calling it Anthony Ferraro's blind busking uh, live stream tour. And it was like, we set up in all these places. The first stop was election day in front of the white house. Ooh. And it was just like, we had so many people that were protesting and then just making them all smile. Like there were people asking the, uh, asking the, the, like pro the people playing music and stuff to turn their stuff down so they could just listen to me. Like it was so fun. Man. Like we were spending so much positivity and we got home and then like, it was this amazing feeling of like, wow, we just accomplished something kind of great, you know, like no matter if anyone sees it or not, like this was amazing, you know, like we, we did it and we accomplished it. We made a tour and did it ourselves and just drove, like she drove 10,000 miles in seven weeks. Like Whew. she did all the driving and you know, except for one, one day she took me to the salt flats in Utah and we got to go driving. Uh, I got to go driving like all around, like in the car, dude, like whipping. It was amazing. <laughs> like, like at one point she got out of the car and was on the Bluetooth and telling me like left and right. It was incredible. <laughs> and uh, it, it was like, you know, so when I got home, I was like, I, I have like a story. I know I have a story and I know like I can help people but I'm just not able to reach people. Like, I don't know how to grow this thing. Like, I don't know how to reach more people and stuff. And we just like, you know, one day, like during the pandemic, she was trying to get me to do TikTok. And I was like, screw TikTok, you know, like it's all dances and stuff. She was trying to get me to do like dance with my cane. And I was like, no, like it's so stupid. Like, like, screw that. And like best decision ever, like saying no to that. And like, we both agree. And then months later, you know, we're sitting in our apartment. I'm like, I was like listening to a couple of TikTok videos. I was like, all right, it's not all dancing and stuff. And like started realizing like, all right, this app's kind of like growing really rapidly. And like, there's a lot of outlets on it. And I introduced myself, you know, just saying like who I am, Anthony Ferraro training for the Paralympics. I was born blind, like I uh, skateboard surf and do this the motivational speaker, play music, blah, blah, blah. And Went to bed with like 30 followers and like the video probably had like 100 views and then woke up and had like 30,000 views and like it had like uh, I had like a thousand followers. And I was like, wait, what happened? Like and like all these people saying, you know, like wanting to know more and, and just thinking it's really inspiring all this stuff and, and all these like positive messages, you know. And so I was like, wow, like you know, we're reaching more people and it just kept growing after that. Like we just kept posting videos. Uh, I try to do like pause, like, you know, create positivity and like just make people smile while like trying to educate the world. Like, listen, man, like no matter your situation, it's not that bad. Like there's ways to figure out life, you know, like I may do things a little differently than you, but look, I still do them. And I just try to like motivate and inspire people and just, you know, like I said, sp spread the positivity along the way and it just kept growing. And then, you know, Lad Bible reached out and did like a feature and that kind of like, we started a content schedule where we were posting like almost every day on Instagram, which we've never done before and started growing more. And then, you know, Lad Bible made a post and like it kind of made a little exponential growth on the account and Instagram. And it was really cool to see like, I had like hundreds of messages, you know, message requests from people, all these positive, you know, messages from people. It, it was amazing. Like I was like, I was in tears, honestly, like having my voice over read some of these messages and having my fiance read some. And it was like, it, it was wild. And I was like, wow, I, you know, I'm in a, it was like high school all over again, where, you know, at a huge, a way bigger scale. But like, I remember in high school, all these newspaper articles coming up to me and being like, you know, blind wrestler, blind wrestler. And I, I get so annoyed, man. I'd be like, go away. Like, I'm I'm just a wrestler who was blind. Like, I'm just trying to do life and be normal, blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, go interview that kid. Like, he's so much better. And finally, you know, I did a few articles, articles in high school and, like, got these messages out of nowhere that were like, because of seeing you in your situation, just doing life, like, I was able to quit, you know, my – I was an alcoholic and was able to stop drinking. I was like – I'm able to get out of bed and like stop feeling sorry for myself, all these things. And it's like, 
And then like blind people reaching out too. And I was like, wow, like it was like this almost like you're selfish if you don't try and help others, if you don't like keep spreading your story and try and like, you know, pick people up and, and tell them, you know, help them in their situations and show them it's not that bad or, and that, you know, even though it can get bad, we can get through it and like life gets better. And, you know, it kind of hit me all over again where I was getting all these messages on Instagram, like fast forward. And I was like, wow, you know, I, I almost like felt this chill where I'm in a position where I, I think I can really like try and help a lot of people and just create awareness and, and like never had this opportunity. And it's been really amazing just, you know, reaching more people and building this network of like like-minded individuals that just, cause there's so much like division and, and hate and like negativity online and stuff. And I'm just really trying to create like the biggest network possible of, you know, people that just want positivity, people that want to work together, people that want to come together instead of like creating all these little groups, like we should all work together and like, you know, work towards something great, like making the world a better place. You know, it, some, it, it sounds crazy, but it's like, that's what my vision is. I just want to create a network where everyone works together, you know? Yeah. I love that, man. And I think you're doing a great job at that. It's kind of interesting though, that you're talking about, you know, all this positivity and change that you're doing. But then recently you had kind of this TikTok controversy where someone reported your account and they said that you were lying about your being blind and then TikTok kind of like shut down your account for a little bit, right? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't like one person. I think it was like hundreds or thousands Whoa. of mass reports that uh, people just spamming my account saying, you know, he's faking a disability. And like, I try to tell people, man, I'll, give me your eyes. I'll give you my TikTok login. Like, it's <laughs> not that important to me. Like, you know, I, I would never, it baffles me that someone would even fake a disability or, you know, people would accuse someone of faking a disability, but it, it was, it was a shock at first, man. Like it was brutal. Like I, I just grown this account, you know, me and Kelly have been working on it for the past couple months and grew it to like, you know, 240,000 followers or something. And it's like, we're on live. I'm on live cooking, literally cooking chicken nuggets and like showing people like, look, this is how I cook, <laughs> you know, blah, blah like on live stream and like people are like you're not blind stop faking it blah, blah blah like all these comments coming in and like i just I'm like yeah i am like you know i don't even be negative towards them and i just try to like educate people and they just started coming in the next thing i knew i was logged off my live stream and the next thing i knew my account was just logged out and i couldn't access it at all and i couldn't access any of my original content uh i sent tiktok like so many emails, like multiple emails from, they have multiple email accounts you can contact and, you know, it, n no word for a couple of days and the account was just logged out. But, you know, <laughs> that all is like, whatever, negative, blah, blah, blah. And like, it was, it affected my mental health for a minute. I will say like when that account got taken down, I couldn't believe it. I was like shaking a little, like I pretty much went to my bed. Like I was like, I can't believe it. Like, you know, this is brutal. Like uh, no explanation. Like, what did I do wrong? I started thinking all these things like, cause it was like, you, uh, you violated TikTok's uh, community guidelines, like multiple community guidelines, all this stuff. And, and then uh, they were saying it was a trust and safety problem too. Like uh, my account wasn't positive and safe space. <laughs> it's and the opposite of that, man. It's, it's it, was, it was so confusing, man. But like, and, and, you know, I was in bed. I was really, like, upset because it's just this huge shock. And uh, Kelly, like, comes over. She's like, you got to keep going. Like, you got to – you can't give up. And I'm like, I know, but, like, I just feel like giving up, you know. Sometimes you just feel like giving up, but I know it's not an option. And she, like, basically pulled me out of bed, and I did a video on it. She made me a new account, and I literally did a video just explaining what was happening. And I thought, like – 10 people might see it. No one would care, you know? And the next thing I know, this video just got like 200,000 views and like, tw like in, in three days, like 20,000 followers, like all these people coming over, people like sending so many positive messages, like adding TikTok, like trying to get their attention, people literally making their profile picture, my picture to create awareness. Like it was, I couldn't believe like the support, the, the overwhelming, like, 
you know, people just coming to your, your, to bat for you and like asking what they can do, like all these things. And I just, I, I was blown away, man. Like once again, in tears of like basically gratitude, like how is this happening? How, how do that many people care? And it's like, wow, this is really a thing. Like people are really, you know, there it's happening. Like people, people got behind us and all these things. And then like <laughs> four or five days later, after like, so many tick uh you know we created a vlog account i just started vlogging the whole thing and just you know updating everybody and finally like tick after multiple tw- tweets instagram stories messages everything m- emails from multiple people even emailed us tiktok on our behalf like multiple creators and stuff they finally responded just saying sorry um we after further review we realize your account does not uh violate any community guidelines and that's like all it was they didn't say anything else no explanation it was like i was so baffled like i I couldn't believe it i was like what is going on this is not fair like you can't just do this you know just all these thoughts and it's just you get trapped with that negative mindset but i was trying to create awareness too that like hey this is not okay like i was trying to i brought over to instagram too to just let people know what was going on and like so many people were so mad and like couldn't understand it. And it's just like, it's something in my opinion that really needs to be fixed because I know other blind creators where their account will get banned once a week from this happening. And it's just, it's not okay. And it, especially to the creator to, you know, especially a disabled creator to have accounts banned with no explanation, no warning. And it's for, reports of your faking a disability and it just it makes no sense to me so just kept going man and like just you know don't stop it's like you just started the vlog started vlogging every day and kept it going now even the account the other account got back up thanks to like everyone's support and you know so many people reached out and stuff and it was just out of like all this fire you know it comes beauty it's like you know i was banned all this negative stuff happened but like all this positive stuff happening at the same time. So you have to like try and focus on that and like see that the world is good, man. Like there's good people out there. Definitely. In fact, man, that's how I found out about you because I saw a lot of my uh, friends were sharing um, your video about kind of getting your account back online. And then I shared it and then I, and then I started looking into you and, and then I found your film and I found that you were doing all the, the busking too, or I was like, man, this guy's super interesting. I got to reach out. So that's, it's kind of how I found you, man. So that's kind of cool too. If you think about it like that. No, absolutely, man. I, I'm really stoked to meet you. I, I'm uh, it, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, definitely. And you know what, man, it kind of reminds me of, you know, we were talking about, uh, your family and your coaches and teammates, they, how they all had your back when you were in high school wrestling. And, but you also had all these, like, I'll just call them haters. Cause I like to use that word. Yeah. I think it's fun to use. Yeah. You, you had a lot of haters, man. Oh yeah. And, uh, here you are again, you have a lot of followers and fans on social media, but then you also had all these haters and you, you kind of have to fight through those negative comments and just kind of shrug them off, man. Cause that's life, dude. And it's kind of like it's happened to you in high school. It's happening to you now. It's probably going to happen to you when you're 50. It's probably going to happen to you when you're 70. You know, that's kind of why I find you inspiring because one, you're keeping a positive mentality and uh, you're leading by example, which I think is the best way to do things. I appreciate that, man. And I will say one thing, like I do have this positive mindset and a positive attitude, but like, I don't want people to think like that's all it is. Cause like, everyone's like, that's impossible. And it is like some days, man, they suck. Like some days it's hard to get out of bed. And it's like, that's all right. Like some days it's okay to not be okay, but like you got to work through those and like, remember the things that pull you out of that and actively do that when you're in that, like, you know, crappy mindset, that dark hole. Cause like, (laughs) I want to preach positivity as much as possible. Cause the more positivity around, like the more it's contagious, but like, I have my negative days. Like I have days where I'm, I have a bad attitude, like, you know, and that's, it's just life. But like the goal is to have more of those good days and and work through those bad days and learn lessons through them to try and help other people when they're in their bad days, you know? Definitely. Yeah, man. And I, I, you know, I have my days where I don't feel quite so positive and, but yeah, doing this podcast and talking to people like you and talking to, you know, the other, you know, 
32 guests I've had on, like it's uh, very helpful to talk to others. And I, I always preach that, you know, reach out and talk to people, find your community because uh, you're not alone. You know, there's a lot of other people in a similar situation. Exactly. And I also try to tell people it's there's if you think you're alone, I guarantee there's someone if not one person, there's multiple that have done it before you and have already done it. And there's people to ask for advice and get like, you know, you can make your own ways, but there's also, you can bounce, like get ideas from people that have done this before. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. And that's kind of what I love about talking to everyone is like every person I talk to, like teaches me multiple new things and ways to think about things. And I kind of take, you know, pick and choose, you know, from each interview I do. And, and I, and I'm becoming a better person from it, you know, yeah, your own little toolbox. Exactly. Yeah. It's like free, free therapy. <laughs> but yeah, man, thanks for sharing that. And it's good to hear that your accounts back up and working. So, uh, if again, if you're out there listening and you want to check out Anthony, uh, give him a follow on social media. His handle is at a S F vision. And that kind of covers Instagram, TikTok. Are you on Twitter and any of that? Yeah, it's all on there. But uh, everything, uh, you can find everything on my website is just uh, asfvision.com. And it has like my YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, the documentary. I have a bunch of merch for sale. Like uh, I have like clothes with Braille on them. I have a bunch of different stuff. And uh, just everything, you can find everything on my website. Yeah, right on. And that's asfvision.com. Dot com, And if you want to make it even easier, just click on the show description and I will have a link to Anthony's website there. So click on that. It's a link to everything. Um, I, oh. That's how I found your, uh, watched your documentary. So that's a good place to, if you're, if you're interested in watching that. And, but a few more things, man, I wanted to talk about, you talked about your shoulder injury earlier. So you're kind of like uh, not training right now. I well, actually, yeah, it's my groin. I like, I tore my groin a couple of weeks ago. Ooh. Yeah, it's brutal. I, it's getting a lot better, but it's still just so painful, like certain movements. So I, I'm trying to meet with a physical therapist soon. And, you know, it's like, it's all time. It's all money. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive, man. I, yeah. I was asking you that because, you, you know, like you said earlier, you're now training for the Paralympics. Is your injury going to set you back for this year? I know, I know the Olympics are kind of, up in the air whether or not it's going to happen or not yeah so that's the thing they are definitely s- still up in the air but uh i have i had one tournament i had to miss because of this this past weekend in azerbaijan which i'm actually you know i got really bummed out about but you just have to keep going and i have one more tournament that i have to try and get healthy for it's like the last tournament to try and qualify for the paralympics and it's in England at the end of June, and if I could get healthy for that, that'd be good. I'll know, at, you know, probably next week if I, you know, how my chances are now. They were really good, and then this kind of set me back. But with that being said, you know, I, I'm going straight for 2024 as well. The Olympics are going to be in Paris, and I'm not going to stop, you know, through there. So um, it's only like it's not four years away, so it's only two and a half years away. So that's a very positive note. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I didn't know that they were doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if not this, if not this time, you're gonna do it the next time. Yeah, the journey doesn't stop. It never stops, <laughs> man. I could break my leg tomorrow. And just, <laughs> you know, do something else. But I'm just whatever I switch to, I'll try to be the best at that. You know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm rooting for you, man. And uh, best of luck to you to make it this year. If it happens, you know, we'll see. Exactly. And uh, what about your future of music? You got anything in the in the works now with that? Yeah, this summer I'm going to be doing a lot of busking around the area too, um, you know, in like Asbury Park area and stuff like that. And also play a lot of local gigs at like bars and restaurants and stuff. And then, you know, I definitely want to – I'm getting married next October, so that's coming up and getting ready for the wedding and stuff like that. Congrats. So. Thanks, man. Um, I'm really excited. And then, you know, other than that, just a lot of playing, like I said, the local local restaurants and bars and then busking. But also going to try and plan another busking tour in the future, like cross country. Yeah, that's awesome. And again, for those listening, if, if you want to check out, you have videos on your YouTube channel. Yeah, the whole tour basically yeah. is on my YouTube. And you, you went to like 10 different cities and you kind of just set up 
a little shop at on on the street and just kind of played and I think it's awesome, yeah, man. Thanks. But yeah, yeah all those awesome. videos are on your YouTube. So where the hell are you from? I'm from North Carolina. Oh, where at? Uh, I grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Oh, my sister used to live there because her husband was in the army. Yeah, Fort Bragg. Yep. Yeah. I visited there a couple times. Yeah, yeah. I grew up there, and then I went to college in Wilmington, North Carolina. UNCW. Yep. Yeah. That's where my brother went. Yeah, I was a film student there. No way. Yeah. That's my brother was basically a surf major. No, <laughs> Environmental studies. My brother John, he is my oldest brother. Okay. Yeah. He, uh, He's a lawyer now, but yeah, no, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's it. That's, that is bizarre, that's dude. Because yeah, that school's man. not the biggest school. Like, it's not the most like common university to hear people go to. No, he. I think he checked out a bunch of schools. Like, that one had the best storm at that moment, so the waves looked the best. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he picked. Judged it off of. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah so. there's a lot of surfing there. It's a. I love North Carolina. I love uh, Asheville is actually one of my favorite places. Oh, yeah, Asheville's beautiful, man. And the people there are really nice. Me and Kelly during the tour, we uh, we went along the whole like a lot of the Blue Ridge Parkway. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I have a family trip coming up in Asheville in October. I'm excited about. Oh, that's what's up. But yeah, but yeah, I love North Carolina too, man. I just had to move up here to New York because of public transit and. Uh, I'm a video. Oh, it's way more accessible. Yeah, and I and I have and I'm a video editor, so there's a lot of work in my industry here too. So it made sense for me That's to move. Awesome. But you know, I'm still like a I still consider myself a North Carolinian. <laughs> That's what's up. But uh, cool man. I'm I'm pretty sure we could talk for three hours if we really wanted to. Um, and uh, but yeah, I'm glad we connected. I do end each episode. By asking my guests, like if they have a nonprofit or organization or charity that they want to give a shout out to, I wanted to ask you if you had one in mind. I'd like to shout out No Barriers. Probably. No Barriers. Uh, it's like Eric Weinmayer's nonprofit, and they do amazing stuff. Um, I'm gonna be trying to, you know, create something in the future. Uh, I have a lot of visions to make something soon, but. Um, no barriers is is one of my favorite you know they do amazing things they they brought me hiking sixteen thousand feet in peru for four days and they took me 90 miles in the grand canyon on the river like just whitewater rafting it was insane they they do amazing things for people so them cool no barriers the other one is a huge inspiration in my life like they do so much for me in my life is uh the Music Association of Visually Impaired Students. It's uh, Mavis. It's in New Jersey, and it's it's honestly the best organization in the world. They they make it possible for blind musicians in New Jersey to find teachers, get the right equipment, and just you know give them funds for uh, lessons. So it's incredible. Right on, and that's Mavis and uh, No Barriers. And if you're listening, you want to check those out, again, check the show description. I'll have links there. You can click on and explore those and get involved. But, Anthony, man, I think that covers it for our talk today. Like I said, I'm glad we connected. I I plan to keep in touch with you online, man. And and if you're ever in Brooklyn or if I'm ever in Jersey, dude, I'll have to to hit you up, man. No, 100%, man. It's been great talking to you. It's it's been a great uh, conversation. Thank you. Yeah, man. And uh, you know, I close out my each of my episodes. You know, I kind of have a catchphrase. I say, uh, because my podcast is called the See Through Podcast, so I say, stay transparent. You know, that's kind of my thing. But today, I think I'm gonna end it out. I'm gonna say, one love, man. <laughs> one love, brother. And that's a wrap on episode 35 featuring Anthony Ferraro. If you want to explore everything we talked about, all the different projects that Anthony's a part of, the documentary, his busking tour, his podcast, his website, all of that, just click on the show description. There you'll find all the links you need to explore and learn more about Anthony He's definitely worth following and keeping up with as his work is just fun and entertaining as well as uh, educational and inspirational. I mean, what more do you want? But that's all I'll add to this outro. As always, make sure to follow or subscribe to the See Through Podcast on whatever platform you're streaming on and follow the podcast on social media. The handle is at See Through Pod. You can also find everything you need 
about this podcast by visiting the website seethroughpod.com. And yeah, yeah, I'm super glad I met Anthony. We had so much in common, it's crazy. But that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And until next week, stay transparent, everyone.